What's up, Dragon Brood? We're going to be playing some Golgari today, and it's going to focus on demons. This is a list or a version of this, I guess, that's been going around for a little bit, and I've not really given it a chance to kind of do its thing. So I'm going to be looking forward to how this works with the different rooms and stuff, because it looks powerful, but we'll find out. But this list we're playing today has some cut down, because, you know, early removal, some duress. I don't know if I like duress as much as I would rather it just be other removal or other threats, but we'll see by the end of the video. We have some anoint with affliction for the same things, being able to exile some stuff. And then we have deep cavern bats, no surprise there, the cards is good, also go for the throat. I think pretty much every version of Golgari now, if you're doing anything even remotely aggressive, you're probably playing Mosswood Dread Knight. There is a copy of Terra Sunder, which I don't mind. I'd play another one of these, honestly, with the amount of mono white uh, token control decks that are going around. Only one Liliana. And, you know, this is a spot where I could see changing those duresses to being one Terra Sunder, one Liliana, which that's kind of what I'm going to have my eye on throughout this video. Then we have some Unstoppable Slasher. This is the other new card that's really starting to show up in a lot of places. Some Glissa, no surprise there. Archfiend of the Dross. Now, this works because we do have a way to kill other creatures, cause opponent to lose some life. We also have some stuff that cares about demons, but also Bloodletter Backlazot. So if your opponent's going to lose life, they lose more life, which is awesome. So you play these on back to back turns. Or if you have a really good land here, or a uh, room, I should say. And we have Unholy Annex, which at the end of the turn, you get to draw a card. If you have a demon, which we have a couple of those. Your opponent loses two life and you gain two life. If not, you just lose two life when you draw the card. Then there's also a ritual chamber that, worst case scenario, you just unlock it and you get a 6-6 demon. So that solves your demon problem. The thing I will note about this list is it doesn't have Aklazots. It doesn't have Shieldred. We'll find out if we want those or not, or if we even need them, and if the demons are the better way to go. But like always, at the end of the video, there'll be a link in the description. It'll take you over to Moxfield, a channel sponsor, where you can go ahead and download this and try it for yourself. For now, though, let's go see if demons really are that scary. Yeah, I'm going to assume this hand's a keeper. I can't imagine we would be throwing this away for any reason. Old school mono black. Look at this. Evolve sleeper. I ain't seen one of those in a minute. That's not totally true. I think I saw somebody play it against me like a couple weeks ago. I saw one. But it but it's been a while. Alright, so they'll pump. And since I have removal that can respond, I'm not gonna bother killing it. Because they might pump here. Oh, they're not gonna pump here. Okay, well that's good to know. Uh what do we get rid of here? I need another land for this guy. I'm going to use this now. Uh, you know what? Sure, let's just get rid of go for the throat. Oh yeah, they're not doing a whole lot here at all. So now, even if their next turn's like shielded, we don't care that much. Because then they would leave no blockers for our slasher, and then we just kill the shielded. But they're not going to do that. They're just going to kill our Thrasher. Oh, no. They're going to play Preacher here, which works nicely for us. I could have attacked and traded, which I probably should have at least offered first. Because there's a chance they would have blocked it. Don't know how high that chance is, but they might have considered it. Hey, we got some other people joining here. All right. Let's go up top. All right, they don't have instant speed removal for two. That's good. There's the shielded. A little later than we care about. Um, let's do this first. I don't think they have anything we can even get. Most like, oh, okay, that's not awful. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna attack. And then I guess we'll play this, because if they decide to play their Shieldred, we'll just sack the other one that's tapped. And really have no loss there. Yep. Yeah, opponent's not in a good spot here. We attack, play another Unstoppable Slasher? Yeah, alright. 
I mean, they're kind of priced into blocking. What else are they going to do? <laughs> like, triple slasher. Just the endless murderers. Yeah, that's not going to do much here. And then now you've got to block the other slasher with Shieldred. Oh, I guess now, because that comes into play. Never mind. Oh, well, this is three or less, so that kind of partially solves that problem. And then we move to attacking. Yep, that'll do it. So I don't know how I feel about that, because that was mostly like just playing Unstoppable Thrasher. Like, we had three early removal spells, and then just went Slasher, Slasher, Aklazot, Slasher, and then that was just kind of the game. I don't, I don't know if that's indicative of how that match goes most of the time. We will definitely keep this. There's plenty going on with this hand. A gnawing vermin. Are you milling yourself or me? Yourself. Oh, you're playing rats. Well, let's go ahead and kill this knucklehead, because most of the other things that we possibly could kill, we won't be able to. Um, do we want to draw a card here or just play a body? I feel like I want the card, but also against rats, I think I just want the body. I want the card to try to dig deeper to four mana based on our hand, but I'm willing to just do this and see what they've got going on. All right, that's not an awful backup plan. I attack, take two. I'm probably taking more than that, because this is for each rat you control, right? So I could possibly be taking, like, five next turn. Ugh. I think I got to do it, though, based on the circumstances. I could have saved a block, but getting greedy here. Not block or not attacking is probably the correct answer. All right, found the land. We could play Archfiend next turn. There's Lord Skitter. Yep, that's what I thought might happen. I was a little concerned about it, but it is what it is. All right. Oh, hold up. That's a big change. All right, no attacks. Uh, even better. So this kind of went away I wasn't expecting. All right, so they'll get their rats into their hand. So what do you got here? Another Lord Skitter, another Persistent Stalker. All right, so I think we got to do this. Let's exile this guy. And then let's kill this guy. So we at least limit what they're doing next turn. All right, so we survived that pretty well. Let's go ahead and play this. No attacks. Duress, probably not great. I'm assuming their hand is predominantly creatures based on what we've seen. If they spend their turn killing the Archfiend, we're not mad at that either. Yeah, it's totally fine. Whoa, Vraska, what, <laughs> what, <laughs> that, okay, there's Vraska's hiding out, what the hell? Alright, we'll take a cut down, not that it really does much here. Okay, now we need more spells, deck, we, we got the lands covered, we need some spells. Okay, and play a rat. Yep. Seems good. Okay, how much do we care about a bat? I mean, their hand is all duplicates of stuff, so it's not great. Go ahead and exile this dude so we just don't have to worry about it. Play our bat. Take a Lord Skitter, I guess. And we're at the point I might as well just start attacking. Right? They lose four, go to seven, and then this is two, four, five, six. 
Not quite lethal next turn, but it's close. Alright. I mean, I guess if I attack with this, they have to block? Because then it'd be 10, they go to 1? There's no way we die next turn. Yeah, I guess so. I'm, like, really trying to figure out, like, is this a safe attack? I feel like it is. I can also just, like, block and gain a life if I need to. Giving them back a 3-mana thing they already have in hand doesn't matter that much. Whoa! Opponent just went to 1? All right, cool. All right, that'll do it then. Okay, let's keep it. Slide of hands. They're doing graveyardy things. Probably the Azorius, whatever, with Oculus and Jin and all that. That being said, and us already hitting our fourth land, I'm just going to go for a body here. Like, they want to spend their turns filling up the graveyard? We'll put pressure on them. Yep, we can live with that. I think Unstoppable Slasher off the top would be great here. Eh, that's not at all what we were hoping for, deck. Do you want to bounce it? Sure. And you get to surveil? Sounds great. And they left everything on top, I guess? Okay. That's always concerning. Never want your opponent to leave all their cards on top. That's usually bad news. Okay, well, seeing as how we didn't play anything really after turn two, we're pretty much dead, I would assume. But, let them counter this. They'll play their Haughty Jin with some type of counter backup, and we'll have to find another removal. Like, we know the drill. You just gotta draw it. No Haughty Jin, no Oculus. Wow, okay. That's a little bit of a bonus. Not mad at that. Unexpected, but I'll take it. I'll assume another counter here. Yep, you got it. So it seems this is just mono blue. Just setting up big hotties in later. Or I guess it could be LUs or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Can't use this, because LU's is too big. Needed to go for the throat. That probably doesn't solve any problems, does it? Hmm. I don't want to go about this. I guess we attempt it. I don't expect much to come from this, though. Yep. Uh, there's already Azorius decks that play Oculus and Jin. Like, they do work surprisingly well together, more than you would think. Alright, what are we doing? Bouncing everything to our hands. Replaying Eluge. Sure. I mean, at this point, I might as well block. Because I feel like we're just going to be bouncing stuff or something anyway. Okay, might as well take our attack, let them bounce it or exile it or whatever it is they're going to do. Because we know that's what's coming. I mean, zero surprise here. 
Sure, I don't think it matters if it's mono blue or blue white. Like they, the cards still work together. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know we have this already. So what if we just lead with this? I'm like that'll get the first counter. Oh, so they just tapped entirely. All right. Well, can we find a land here? Well, I should have specified untap land. Yeah, I have to assume we're dead now, right? I mean, they need four attacks, three attacks. Eh, four, because we're at 19. Maybe not. Not yet, anyway. Man, too bad I haven't drawn a go for the throat. That would have changed this game entirely. Kind of the downside, though, it's the good and the bad if you're going to play something like Anoint with Affliction, right? It lets you exile some things that are problematic that help out, like we saw in a previous game. But situations like this, it's pretty bad. Because unless they play Hadi Jin, we don't even have anything we can target on their side. I mean, other option, they might just be holding a bunch of counters. And if they are, then maybe we attack with just our land and our creature and win. Yeah, if they have the crab to tap creatures, that's fine. If we just lose to that, we just lose. We just accept it. But even then, I would go to 13. I believe crab is 5. Oh, I guess I guess it would be 7. So we go to 12. So they could possibly kill us. All right. Well, this is our one shot. I'm assuming this counter will not work. And we might just, we're just dead, right? I can't see, now that I'm thinking about it, there's not really that many solutions here for us. Unless their hand is just straight trash, which I can't imagine that's the case. Mmm, they just let that dude die? Really? Really? This has to be the, the flash crab, right? Because that's the only reason you let that die, I think. Because nothing else makes sense here. Okay, well, yeah, now we lose. Like... We can attack or not attack. I think the result is the same. Because they flash the crab, tap down our Archfiend, and then we die. Oh, well, they didn't have it. Maybe we're not dead. There's another Haughty Jin. That would keep them alive. Double Haughty Jin definitely keeps you alive. But if they don't have counters, then I guess we our goal is still just find a removal spell then? Yeah, we're still on not... I don't know how this game progressed. Like, this was such a weird sequence. I guess we just go to four. And we either draw something useful or we're dead. Like, game ends on this turn one way or the other. All right. Okay. Gonna keep trying to load stuff up here. I mean, it wasn't a counter. I don't know what it is. All right, somehow we won that too. I, I don't know. I thought of like 20 cards that kill us that the opponent could have had. I don't know how we won that. Genuinely don't. I mean, was there... I mean, I guess they really didn't have any other sequence of stuff. I mean, they countered what they could. They drew cards. They played all their hottie gins. I don't know. I just weird. I mean, I'll take it. It's a win. Just games don't always progress the way you think, you know? All right. Let's see what this does. I think here we're just going to lead with a deep cavern bat. Well, 
I have nothing you can take, opponent. You hear me? Nothing. Oh, you're doing what we're doing, but you're in mono black. Fair. Good to know. I guess it's time to start rolling out the glisses. Uh, what? Did not expect to see that. So there's some reanimator element going on on their side. That needs five to unlock the other side. Deal. Also, like, Glissa can kill that, so that's fine, too. Uh, I think we're just going to go here. So we get some extra life loss, or we get to kill a door. Like, your call. I was like, you might as well play the demon at this point. Nice. Uh, deck is definitely trying, I'll tell you that. This one... Uh, creature and opponent controls, guys. Alright. Sweet. Uh, we'll destroy an enchantment. Alright, opponent's at seven. Uh, I was gonna Dread Knight here. But I might just unstoppable slasher. Yep, that'll do it. Here's a random thing. Like, we've kind of only played against two decks, right? Well, I guess it's not true. It's been mono black or mono blue, but different versions of the black deck. But... We've kind of just coasted through those, which was kind of silly. But we will continue on. But I will say, I don't know if it's significantly different than just playing regular Golgari midrange that could also just be playing Shieldreds and Aklazots or whatever. Though the room is nice. I mean, getting extra cards isn't irrelevant. All right, let's see what we can do. All right. Oh. Uh, knowing what we're up against, I guess we just lead with this. Oh, they didn't even have a way to kill it. Oh, well, that's why. Well, that's unfortunate for us. This is a matchup that is going to be very, very bad for us. <laughs> Some of our removal spells don't work. We can't really get rid of artifacts. We have a singular uh, thing to get rid of the synthesizer, I think. Yeah, we're going to be in a lot of trouble here, folks. I'm like, do I just play Unstoppable Thrasher because then it forces them to block a bunch? But then it eventually gets exiled in two turns. Like, I don't know what this has to look like right now. All right, I guess we got to go here. It at least gets a Sunfall. Would have been nice if we'd have had that earlier. Back-to-back -back turns would have kept the Synthesizer off the table. All right, I guess we go here. And just try to piece something together. Yeah, we're obviously not attacking with our uh, cavern bat anymore. Uh, I lied. We're attacking with our cavern bat. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess it's probably still worth it. Man, we needed to land so badly this turn. Ah, uh, gosh. I attack, retreat. Yeah, might as well. Man, this is tough. No land there hurt a bunch. 
Ugh. And I don't think we have anything really we can spend this mana on. Yep. If you have a big old five five, it's gonna give something lifelink. Yeah, I don't I don't think with especially with this draw, I don't think we could win this. I think this is one the opponent gets. Yeah, there's there's nothing we can do here. GG's. Maybe if we'd have got our big six six demon or something, but not like that. If you have if you don't interact with your opponent, they should beat you. Period. Pass the turn. Oh, so this is what we're doing. All right. We're going to counter this? Nope. Hybrid, you got it. Oh, well, this will work nicely. This is my home. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? I kind of would like to find, like, Slasher plus Duress on this turn. I'd like to two-spell, if possible. Would you like to add a counter to my Liliana? Probably not. Okay, so we got that. Let's go here. Oh my god. Um Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm going to take one of these because well, that doesn't matter that much. Huh. Under the circumstances, I'm wondering if I want to just play Unholy Annex instead here. I was thinking about playing the slasher, but if we Unholy Annex we get a chance to get another card. I can discard the slasher, then play this, which Serum Vision can't or Serum Snare can't hit. Oh, they can still hit it. They just don't proliferate for it. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Drop it. Because their goal isn't to kill us by life loss anyway. It's just to get us on toxic damage. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Let's go here. All right. Yeah, there's an argument to be made for taking Vraska's Falls so we don't get the poison. But I was kind of figuring the sequence of the game where they're going to do that. Then probably bounce this. We get one. Do our thing. Not the end of the world. Going to go ahead and attack. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and play that tapped. I'm just gonna play this as an actual creature here. In the turn. Yep, works for me. What do you think of Calamity with the Red Overlord? Uh, we've already done that, like, beginning of the season. I think that's totally reasonable. All right, opponent, you're at 14. You got to start doing something here. I mean, just blocking is also reasonable, but I'm assuming we're going to be bouncing this Archfiend of the Dross at some point. Unless maybe their plan is just block it enough to uh, like die to it, which is also reasonable. All right, well, we'll go here. You can counter it if you so choose. All right. No, 
Oh, a backup Archfiend. That's nice. I mean, that's a lot of damage. I mean, you got to do something, right? Seems crazy to not do it. I mean, you've been, I would say, you've been sitting on the serum snare for a minute. <laughs> like, that was about to be some wild work to just sit on that the whole time. While the beatings are commencing. Oh, nice. And extra removal spells. Fantastic. So I think playing into the fact they couldn't reads easily get rid of the Archfiend with the hand they had made sense. And it was worth taking the risk to let them keep the Vraska's Fall. Mostly because it enticed them to kill Vra the Liliana and it left my creatures alone. And we already had the Unholy Annex set up as well. So we knew we could get ahead on cards. And damage. What's the room do when it's unlocked? It lets us draw extra cards and opponents lose his life. The other half just makes a demon. Which we haven't needed because we're spending our mana on a bajillion other things right now. Also, if we play it right, we could just hold on to our own... Go for the throat to kill a demon that won't allow us to die. Which is super nice. Yep, that'll do it. We are going to keep this. I think it's just going to be play Cottage into Duress next turn. Unless it just feels like something we just have to kill immediately. Uh, well, we can't kill that anyway because it's an artifact. So that solves that problem. Sadly, I am going to be filling their graveyard for them. Oh, yeah, we'll take this. <laughs> don't, don't want them filling the yard up too much. They did have a second land. So they could lead with a uh, wicker folk if they want to, but... Oh, Burrow Fiend. Sure. I have not enjoyed Burrow Fiend in those builds as much as other people. Not sure if a particular one's right or wrong. Just hasn't worked out. For me, the same way it's worked out for other folks. I decided to go with Glissa here because they don't have any removal in hand, so they'd have to draw it. And ultimately, I wasn't going to get to kill what I wanted to with Liliana anyway. They'd get to choose. But here, maybe I can attack, kill something. I don't know. All right, what do you get with Breakout? Fear of missing out, which is already juiced up. I need to find another cheap removal card here is what I need. Though I guess technically if we attack with Glissa, they're priced into blocking. Because otherwise we just get to kill fear of missing out, which isn't terrible. So we still get to kill two things next turn regardless, right? One will get whatever blocks Glissa, and then we get to kill the other thing that's not Patchwork Beastie. After that, I don't know, because we are staring at a balustrade worm in their yard, which could get kind of dicey. But they are short of land for it, so there is that. Yeah, the Johnny Avatar, I believe... Oh, they have found a torch the tower. Oh, no. That hurts. Mmm. That sucks. Okay. Okay, that's a good recovery. Not mad at that. Hmm. Okay, this is pretty good, right? Because even if they get the land... Oh, what I was saying earlier is the Johnny's, right now, you could buy that on Arena. It's part of the uh, 
charity thing they're doing. But yeah, so even if they play Balustrade Worm, we'd be able to kill it and I guess fear missing out. Then we Liliana to kill a thing. We don't have much going after that, but it's something. Another fear missing out. All right, we definitely want to kill both of those. We don't need taking an extra eight damage or whatever this turn. That would be unpleasant. I guess it could be way more than that, because it could have crewed the Burrow Fiend, then attacked and attacked. That would have been kind of gross. All right. Good news is, too, unless they find a land for Burrow Fiend, we've now dealt with all the haste stuff. Oh, and then they find another one. Fair enough. Okay, that's not bad, but doesn't particularly help us here. So, I'm going to attack. Get rid of the Burrow Fiend, because that's our immediate concern. Or, I mean, the Worm. And we at least have some life now, if we need it. Wickerfolk, you're hasty and big. And that's also hasty and big. Alright. Well, now... Okay, I was about to say something else, but if we just keep finding ways to stay alive, I guess we keep finding ways to stay alive here. So now we can block. Okay, Patchwork BC is fine. Are they all out attack here or don't? I mean, the thing is, even going to three is not the easiest thing here. I mean, I see their logic. If they, they're they gambling on us not having removal spell and us not blocking or with the Archfiend, obviously, to not take six. So then we block here, go to three. Opponent goes to 14. Excellent. Not dead. That's the best thing we could hope for here. Uh, can we attack? We can block something and gain three, so we're at six. I think that's safe, actually. So then they're at eight, and we're threatening lethal next turn if they attack. Another beastie, so not lethal anymore. I mean, sure. I mean, you get another card, but... Don't really want them to... Alright, so they go to six. Alright, now we're good. So we crack this. Yep, alright. Though, actually, one thing I will say there... Is, I was only at three... So I shouldn't crack the food during their instep, because if they have a lightning strike, I could still die. So what I should do is just wait till the next turn. I'm not going to die to my Archfiend. So then attempt to attack with the Archfiend while they're at six, see what happens, then crack the food or whatever, you know, possibly. So there was a safer way to do that, but ultimately it ended up not mattering. But one of those small things that you should be aware of. I think overall this deck's fine. Like... Again, I think I would still rather have another Terra Sunder and another Liliana. I think more than just the two Anointed Afflictions. However, Anointed Affliction is very good against like Mono Red, Rabbits, you know, all that other stuff that plays super small things. So I'm not going to say it's a bad card to have, but there's still also enough of the Mono White token control, you know, whatever stuff going around with the uh, Caretaker's Talent, stuff like that that I think having those Terra Sunders could be really nice. Or a way to just get rid of stuff like Simulacrums or whatever, right? Because you don't have a way to really do that main deck. So that would be one of the changes I would consider. And it's still pseudo-removal, you know, as things go on. Also, randomly against Mono Red, uh, thanks for follow. Like, you could actually, like, get rid of 
the ley line if you want to or whatever. Like, there's options. There's things you can do uh, with that extra Terra Sunder. So that's something I would probably think about to the point that I might even go to 61 cards. I could see a world where I want to play another cut down, cut the two Anointed Afflictions, go up a Terra Sunder, and add one Liliana. And I think altogether those help solve a couple of problems that the deck might face otherwise. But all that being said, the deck actually worked pretty well. There's really little to complain about. I mean, this to me, whether you play this version or not, like you could play a version that has like Aklazat, Shieldred, whatever, more traditional uh, Golgari. And I think you're still going to be pretty well off. I just don't like playing the Golgari list right now that try to be all in on the innkeeper's talent and then try to stick a, uh, what you call Vraska or whatever, right? Those, don't get me wrong, those are still playable and you can win that way, but they are much more susceptible to disruption, right? If they get rid of your talent or whatever, now you're just kind of struggling and you're playing like the slow grindy game without a way to really close it out. Whereas this, it's like, okay, they've got to deal with the slasher. They've got to deal with the blood letter. They don't want you getting extra cards off the the rooms, right? Like, there's a bunch of things in here that is happening. And the same thing with the other versions, right? If you have Shieldred, if you've got Aklazots, it's like those are constant threats they have to deal with. They don't have to wait till you get to turn six, seven, eight, you know, and still be in the game. Like, those cause problems immediately. And I think that's the biggest difference. But that being said, this version is one cut down, two duress, two anointed, uh, anoint with affliction. However, these could be replaced. Uh, three Deep Cavern Bat, four Go for the Throat, four Mosswood Dread Knight, four, one Terrace Under, one Liliana, four Unstoppable Slasher, two, un two Glissa Sunslayer, four Archfiend of the Dross, three Blood Letters, four Unholy Annex, nine Swamp, two Forest, four Blooming Marsh, four Land of War Waste, four Restless Cottage, and two Fable Passage. However, the final version, I might have my updates in there when it comes time to download this. But yeah, I gotta say, like always, this one kind of impressed. There's a lot of stuff you can do in Standard. Don't let people tell you otherwise. We got a ton of stuff if you want to follow, because new stuff every day. Because why not? Standard's pretty wild and fun right now. So yeah, that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.